Good morning. My name is Paul. For those of you that don't know me, we're talking about Elijah today, continuing with the series that we've been looking at. That's called I Want to Be Like You. Elijah really is one of my superheroes. He is a superhero. He is a prophet of prophets, really. Elijah did, and God used him to do so many miracles. Some, one that absolutely stands out is Elijah did not die, but was taken to heaven alive in a chariot of fire. Oh, wow. You can't be any cooler than that, can you? This is one guy who prayed for a dead boy and he was raised back to life. He called fire from heaven on more than three occasions and it consumed whatever he, what he was up against. So, he was used greatly of God. Elijah was used greatly of God. Elijah's name, simply put, is My God is Yahweh. The message of his life matched his name. He had come to proclaim that there was one true God and that we should follow the one true God. Elijah lived in the 9th century BC. Elijah came from Tishbite. And in Tishbe in Gilead, King Ahab and his wife Jezebel were at the throne. Jezebel had come from Canaan, where she had been born, born and got married by before she was married by King Ahab. So she, as she came to live in Israel, she came with a large contingent of uh, Baal prophets and priests and set up a sanctuary at the royal city of Samaria. There, with King Ahab and Jezebel, they had put the one true God at par with, Je with Baal, the God that Jezebel prayed to. The Bible also states that King Ahab had done so much wrong in the eyes of the Lord. It was one of the worst offending kings of their period by turning away from God so much. Which then brings us back to some of the miracles that Elijah did. The first one, as he is announced on the stage, Elijah comes up, up and says that there is only one true God and that there would be drought in this land. And there would be drought until the Lord had said otherwise. His very first miracle was put in direct challenge to Baal, the God, the, or this Canaanite deity that King Ahab and his wife were following. How was it a direct challenge? Baal was also called the Lord of Rain and Dew. So by stopping rain and dew falling in Israel, that was directly challenging the whole premise of his being. So if this Baal could not bring dew and rain on the land, that meant he was failing. And it would not only have been because Baal was not happy, but the Lord had said there would be a drought and the prophet of the Lord had pronounced it. So it directly challenged and contradicted what he stood for. We see so many times as well another direct challenge to Baal. At Mount Carmel, after Elijah had been in hiding for three and a half years, he comes back to the king and tells him, gather 450 prophets of Baal and send them to Mount Carmel and there we will do an offering. The false prophets would do their offering to Baal and let Baal bring fire to consume that offering. And I, on the other hand, will call on the one true God and make an offering and ask that God of that we worship, the one true God, Yahweh, 
to provide a fire to consume that offering and we'll see who will prevail. Well, the one that prevails is the one that is the one true God. And as they do this, they go to Mount Carmel. He asks them to... to, to, to Elijah <coughs> asks um, King Ahab and the false prophets of Baal to start their proceedings in the morning. They start in the morning. By afternoon, late into the evening, nothing had happened. Then he said, okay, because there were 400 of you, you can stop now. I will do this offering to, to, to God. He starts by building an altar because the altar there had been destroyed. He takes 12 stones representing each of the tribes of Israel. He puts wood on the top of the stones. He puts his offering on the top. He asks men to come with buckets and buckets of water and doused everything, the wood, the stones, the offering, in lashings of water. And enough to fill the trench around it. And then Elijah prays to God to send fire to consume this offering. And the Lord responds by sending fire from heaven. Not only does this fire consume the, the bull that was on the top, it consumes the wood, it consumes the stones. And in the presence of everybody witnessing, they could see that there was one true God that could rise up to the challenge. And as they are doing this, King Ahab is asked to put to the sword the 450 false prophets. So that's Baal's prophets being killed because they've been found to be wanting, because they've been found to be following a God that is not real. The very same day, Elijah prays to God for rain to come back on the land. And he sent the message to the king that you better start rushing with your chariots back because the wind, the rain is going to be so strong and coming. But another amazing little thing, detail, that I've always skipped as the chariots start going and they're going fast because these are military convoys as they go through. Elijah runs in front of them. God propels him faster than the chariots on his way back. Amazing. God answered prayer. He answered a lot of the prayers that Elijah sent. There was a widow in the three years before the rains had come. Elijah had gone into hiding. He lived with this widow and his son. The first day that they, he met them, they'd, the widow had only one little pouch of flour left and a little oil to make enough for one last meal. And she thought after that, she and her son would die. But Elijah says, make some for me. And he made the widow obliged and made first for Elijah. And then she went to make for themselves. And until it was needed, the flour and the oil never ran out. It kept multiplying and just literally overflowing and meeting their needs. That widow's son falls ill sometime later and dies. And the widow pleads with Elijah. Elijah prays for, for this son and he's brought back to life. On three different occasions, one at the Mount Carmel and two cases of two captains and 50 men being sent to him to summon him to, to, to summon Elijah to come to the king. And Elijah prays and calls on fire to consume the two captains and their men. So when Elijah prayed, God answered his prayers. Just before he was taken up to to, to, to heaven in a chariot of fire. As he walked past the, across the Jordan, he took off his coat, hit the water with it, and the water separated and they walked on dry land. God continued to use Elijah. 
on as he was fed by ravens god continued to provide for him the ravens would come with food to feed him every morning and in the evening and he was fed by an angel we will look at that in a little while but elijah just like you and me he was human he was prone to fear at some point he was so afraid and he lost the courage his courage and didn't know what else to do but when he finally leant back on the lord he found his courage on his own we see that he was nothing he was a man that that was prone to all the weaknesses that we all suffer from his was fear in this case and at some points he also faced discouragement and in another point he felt that he was the only one so he was suffering from a small vision i am the only one left of all of god's followers but god in a very short space of time raised 7000 israelites who had never and who had refused to bow down to baal to fight i got a, a, a reading here from 1 kings 19 verses 4 to 8 He came to a broom bush and sat down under it and prayed that he might die. This is Elijah. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom under the bush and fell asleep. At once an angel touched him and said, "Get up and eat." He looked around and there by his head was some bread back to of a hot coals and a jar of water he ate and drank then he lay down again the angel of the lord came back a second time and touched him and said get up and eat for the journey is too much for you so he got up ate and drank strengthened by that food he traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached herob the mountain of the lord that's one kings 19 verses 4 to 8 the lord was gracious and graceful to him this is when he was elijah was in a under the stronghold of a great depression that he he couldn't see no way out the only thing that he could think of was please take my life lord take my life but the lord was not finished with him he comes alongside and feeds him and shows him and gives him sustenance for him to carry forward with his job just like us when we are down and out the only answer and the only place we can tend to is to our one and true god to carry on elijah appeared with moses during uh, the um, the transfiguration of jesus christ that's in matthew 17:1 verses 1 to 3 He also heard from God this whisper at Mount Sinai. Elijah was carried by a whirlwind back to heaven. During this week while I was preparing this I was talking to a friend and he asked me a question that challenged me. He said we are going through a tough time with this coronavirus pandemic. And he was talking about what is it that we hold dear? what is it that we are going to come out of the other end of this pandemic that is real and that is lasting and it really really got me thinking i've got a question to ask you as well and to ask of myself as well do we say serve bail today in our lives are there aspects of our lives are there aspects of my life and your life that we are still holding on that we are still worshiping could it be the safety of our children conjures up anxieties could it be our finances could it be our careers could it be technology could it be fashion could be it could be anything that we are enslaved to that we have been totally given over to Christ in other aspects of our lives we might have given 
evolves those to Christ. But in my life, certainly, there are areas that I still need to surrender to Christ. So my challenge and my prayer for us this week is to ask Christ, where is it that we are having these hang-ups, these remnants that we have not surrendered, that we need to yield to you, our God. Just like Elijah, I pray that we be reformers, fearless ones in that. Like he rebuked kings, he was mighty in prayer. We all can pray. And we're called to pray. I just pray, just like Elijah, that we do not yield to discouragement. My prayer for us this week is, Lord, help us to find aspects of our lives that we need to give to you. Thank you.